years, and I'm president of the Longboat Key Historical Society, and uh, this is March 6th, uh, 2011, and uh, we're starting a series of uh, interviews about Longboat Key, and we're going to call these interviews uh, Longboat Key Reflections. So we're going to seek out people who have a history here on Longboat Key and uh, want to, uh, you know, put things down for his, you know, historic purposes. And uh, we'll go ahead and record these interviews and use them uh, in the future to uh, have information on Longboat Key's past. Hello, I'm Kent Chetman, and uh, I uh, have been in this area since 1957, so it's been over 50 years. And uh, when I came here, it was uh, dramatically undeveloped and very pristine, and Cortez Road was a two-lane highway. And uh, I was here, and my wife and my, my children were witnessed the uh, opening of the Cortez Bridge in 1957 and uh, we rode over on the old bridge which was uh, a small wooden thing that was very narrow and uh, and then going back home that night we rode over the new bridge it was uh, already open the, the bridge was opened by the ringling uh, elephants with girls up on top and they marched in single file, two abreast, all the way across the new bridge to the, uh, uh, they had the opening at on the Brady Beach side at the toll uh, gate. And they had a ribbon cutting and they had a lot of uh, prominent people uh, make uh, brief speeches and so forth. And from that uh, point on, this area began to develop. Uh, they opened the Anna Maria Bridge uh, in the fall of 57. This bridge here ac crossing Lombo Pass, while it officially, I think, was uh, opened, or at least it was uh, officially finished uh, uh, in 1958, about a year after the Cortez Bridge. However, they had some uh, things to do to complete the bridge and as a consequence, it wasn't really open until uh, 1959. Uh, and it is, remains as it was uh, then, a two-lane bridge. Uh, and then uh, the, the area itself uh, attracted a lot of people. The early development of Lombo Key, uh, as far as a continuous uh, uh, community, uh, was uh, took place on the north end of the key, on the Manatee County end of the key, and uh, in 1914, I believe they opened their post office then. Uh, there had been a post office uh, further down the key, and there had been a, a farming community down there uh, at Corey's Landing, which uh, has been preserved by uh, uh, the developer, uh, uh, Bill uh, Boyer, and uh, he's be credited with di keeping that alive because uh, that landing was where the very first post office on the key was located in 1906. Uh, I have some pictures of the key here. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I have here an array of pictures, uh, primarily given to me by uh, Laura Whitney of Whitney Beach uh, after she completed her very wonderful uh, book on Long Beach. Uh, she gave me these pictures that she could, hadn't been able to use in the book. And uh, they're quite interesting, and I think they reflect what the community looked like back in the uh, early days after they started developing up here at this end of the key in 1913. Now, I'm going to move this so you can maybe just place the pictures right here. Uh, see the camera? Yeah. The camera's right on. Oh, I see. So go yeah, ahead. If right. you just put the pictures down yeah. right in front of the camera, that would be great.
I think this picture here shows a large, it looks like a Jewfish or a large, giant grouper or whatever you want to call it. Right. And uh, I would judge that that probably weighed uh, about 125 or 30 pounds. Or more. Or more, yes. And um, here is a picture that is, I know, very old. I would say it's back about 1913 or 14. And the fishermen are uh, bringing their, cast, their nets in. I don't, I don't know if those are cast nets, but they're bringing in the nets in with the fish. And there was an abundance of fish back in those days because we didn't have the tremendous uh, fish industry that was just it, it taking up everything in the waters. Uh, there is a uh, picture. This woman uh, has a very interesting uh, past. Her name is Millie Johnson. I believe she came down here from... Uh, Wisconsin, and okay, you have to get it right in front of the camera. Oh yeah, you, and just and, if you uh, lay it down right. Oh there. yeah, all right. And uh, Millie, um, uh, there's another one here. I think of her. This is up by their restaurant, which was right up here at the north end of the uh, the key. Right. And uh, she, uh, she, with her husband, Gene Johnson. Uh, uh, operated this restaurant from 1935 until 1940, when they uh, uh, both went into and, uh, something into some kind of works. Uh, Mrs. Johnson was the first president of the PTA, and the original. Uh, Unfortunately, my eyesight's not too good here. And well, I think my mother said that she was like a, a Gibson girl, which was something to do with like the Rockettes, only from Chicago. Well, Is that she right? she had like a dancer. Yeah. Well, well, yeah, I guess that's true because she, uh, the, Laura told me that uh, uh, that she was the life of every party. What? And back in those days, the Boston Red Sox trained in Sarasota. And they made a habit of coming out at least once or twice during spring training uh, to have a dinner out here. And uh, uh, Millie uh, was a great entertainer. And uh, she was the life of the party. And, and they all had fun. And there were people well-known like Ted Williams. And this picture here is the inside of her restaurant. Yes. And that was the restaurant on Broadway? No, that, I, as I understand, it was right across the way here. Well, so that was right across the way. Yeah. Well, yeah uh, That's the one on, on the Longboat Pass. Mother and Daddy said that uh, Millie was bigger than her husband, and when there was <laughs> trouble in the restaurant, she was the one who threw the people out. <laughs> That's right. Okay, you got another picture? We'll put that in there. Uh, well, unfortunately, I don't have any uh, uh, explanation of that, but it, the big thing here in those days was the, the fishing catch. And uh, they didn't have television and didn't have a lot of things. Here's a dredge. Uh, I think that this was probably a picture when uh, they were um, um, raising the uh, old Ritz-Carlton Hotel at the south end of the Key of New Pass. Right. And they brought this uh, uh, dredge in there. They, they, they had pilings of the original Ringling Bridge that was never completed. Mm -hmm. And those pilings had to be removed for mm -hmm. safety's sake, and, and they had a dredge do that. Now, here's some volunteer firemen at the firehouse, and uh, they, uh, I, I'm, I, just, I don't know, they, they, Ansel McMitchin was the fire chief. Cecil Schofield, I think he was the first city clerk. And he also was a, had a real estate company here. Oh, yes, yes. At the end of Broadway. That's right, and I think the, the firm's name, Schofield Real Estate, is still in existence. Uh, there was Howard Ridyard, who was a, uh, from Massachusetts. That's Howard up there. He, he it was a plumber, a plumbing contractor, and he put in all the plumbing here in the village when he uh, moved here after World War II. Hey, okay, we got another picture here. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, we'll pull this over here. Get these out of the way, the ones we've already seen. 
It, yeah, historically, there's a marker up here that designates uh, May 1539 as uh, the time when Hernando de Soto, uh, the Spanish explorer, anchored his fleet of sh nine ships and six six leagues to the uh, northwest of here, which is uh, at the north end of the right. sea. And uh, at, on his way, making passage into Tampa Bay, he cut in behind Anna Maria Island, I guess for protection from the, uh, uh, the waves and things. And this is another picture, I believe, was taken at, down at the south end of the Key uh, when um, they were uh, just uh, leveling the old uh, original Ritz-Carlton Hotel along the New Pass. Okay. And here's another picture of some of the masonry that uh, was still in, uh, in existence. Um, let's see here. Uh, George Frost and Joe Win uh, Winslow mm -hmm. are, are the people in this. Uh, I think Frost is the older man and Winslow was the younger man. So what were these, fishermen or yeah, residents? They, they were residents and they and they were coming in apparently from a fishing trip. Okay. Interestingly, this is the north end of Anna Maria, I mean, uh, Longbow. Longbow Key, excuse me. Uh, and it shows that uh, the tidal, there was a channel running between these two keys here, which uh, now is where Jewfish Key is. Or, and it was Pickett's Key and Jewfish Key. Yeah, and Pickett's they, and, yeah. And, and, and Jewfish was the one on the south, and it was a larger, and the one on the north was Pickett's. And I think both of these keys were were uh, a, a cre creation of, from the uh, the tidal Right. Ways back and forth. Okay. So how about this one, this big one? Okay, now this is the very southwestern tip of uh, Longbow Key. You can see Country Club Shores up here. And uh, this is San... Uh, San... Yeah. Yeah. Sands Point. Sands Point, yes. That's right. Right. And uh, it was the first apartment building. And... Uh, then it was converted into uh, condominiums, and uh, so uh, technically it may be the first condominium, although I think there was one built before that it was at uh, uh, Spanish Main. Okay, I'll just put the picture here. If you get them ready for me, I'll set them right in uh, front of the right. camera. Now, I don't, who is this lady? Do you know? Yeah, this is uh, Mrs. Eugene Wilson. Uh-huh. I don't know where she's from, but... Well, it looks like she's on Broadway in one of those houses yes, there. Yes, it, it is. That's exactly right. Okay. And uh, here's another another one in front of the house. This woman's name is um, Louise uh, Colsey from Decatur, Georgia. Okay. And uh, let me see. No, no, I think that's... Here's... A, um, here's I'm going to just put these. If you just yeah. say what that All is... Right. This is uh, a Clayton Frost, and he's uh, he 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 was one of the early fishermen that uh, came here in the winter time, right? And uh, and they, they all became a very adept at fishing. Now, what about this boathouse? There were several boathouses. I have friends that have a boathouse that they uh, have there. This is Mrs. Risley's boathouse. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And well, you know, I'm related to the Risleys, yes. and uh, through marriage, she was married to John Sabres. Oh, that was I remember that was his wife's yes. name. Uh -huh. Okay, now I'm gonna go right here. Yeah. Okay, that's right there. Uh, all right, this is on March 1919. Imagine that, Mrs. C. H. Wilson Wright, Mrs. Elizabeth G. Neil, I guess it is, mm -hmm. and uh, Isabel uh, looks like Footmore or something. Footman. Footman, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Boy, well, you can see by the, the, the tackle that they have, it's pretty old. <laughs> mm-hmm. Cane bowls, yeah, probably. Right. Now, exactly. I'm going to just put these down because I had them here. I just took them from your... Yeah. So that's right. Okay, now, this... George Frost and Joe, I guess it's Joe, George Frost's boat, or 
Uh, and I can't make up. Well, oh, that's all right. We, we can. Yeah. But they're on their way home, it looks yeah, like, from a yeah, fishing exactly. trip. exactly. Now, there's another fishing. Yeah, that's yeah, here's a, a pretty nice catch. It looks like kingfish. Yeah? And, uh, yeah, they, uh, uh, Netta and Joe Wilson with something f fish. I don't know. I, I kingfish. Kingfish, yeah, that's right. I... Okay, and so then this one right here is, uh, it says that Mr. Frost was with these people. Yeah, Dr. Wiley and A. A or S. Uh, Honestly of Decatur, Georgia, and Eugene here Wilson, on. also of Decatur, Georgia. Okay. And uh, the other one was uh, uh, one of the Frosts. Okay. You got the next one? I think we bought. bought well, we got this little stack here. Yeah, th this uh, this is inside of the uh, restaurant there that Millie and uh, her husband uh, operated. And as you you pointed out, she was uh, she t she was the the man of the house, you might say, because her husband was a very s a small spare person, and uh, and she liked to take charge of everything, and she. And apparently they did a lot of singing, mm -hmm. and uh, they all had a good time. Well, they used to do a lot of drinking back in those yeah. days. I know well, that. From yeah, that's true. Right. Now, what is this? This was as another inside. Of yeah, the... that's that, that, that's pictures of the inside of. The... Now, you don't think this was a restaurant that was on Broadway, like an older one than the one that well, was here? It, it could have been. It could have been because uh, there they was started one down out here. there. I think. Well, you yeah, you may be right there. Because these look yeah. like old, sure, old, and then this is what like a hurricane. Yeah, that's after a storm, and uh, the the the, the uh, you can tell that a lot of debris came up at high tide. Okay. And uh, and this is that restaurant again. Right, right. In fact, I think you're absolutely right because uh, uh, Laura told me that she used to put on little birthday parties for her kids you know, yeah. in that restaurant. Uh -huh. And it was right next door to the uh, post office, I think. Right. So you're, you're right. The, uh, okay, and here's another one of the same. Yeah. It looks like a fun little restaurant. It looks like oh, cypress yeah. walls you're and right. nice little chairs. And I'll tell you a funny story about the restaurant is yeah. that they went there. My parents went there and my dad's brother was there. And she had made a big pie. And so I don't know what kind of pie it was, but it smelled so good that my uh, uncle said, well, I can't afford it, but how much will you charge me just to smell it? <laughs> and she said that she was going to charge him a dime to smell it. And no. so he paid her a dime to smell her, smell her pie. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we've just got to move right along because I just have that. Uh, yeah. yeah. So well, this, what is this book we're looking at? Is this a Yeah, this Whitney? is a booklet that uh, I think Gordon had uh, published. You've got to put it right in front of the camera. Yeah, and that he had to publish. And, of course, this shows the uh, beach line all the way up to uh, the, uh, uh, what is now Longboat Pass. Uh-huh. And uh, it says, Holiday in Distinctive Simplicity. Yeah. And then this is a booklet about Longboat Key in 1941. Did you know that we have a movie that uh, one of the Whitney's had given us at the uh, no. museum? And that it's a movie that they had a movie camera and they actually flew mm -hmm. over the key. Yes. That so was... they had hunting and they had fishing and they had beautiful beaches. Yep. And what more could you want, right? Right. It, they probably would have liked to have air conditioning. Yeah, <laughs> and sailing and boating. Yeah. And, you know, I read one of the things that the uh, Historical Society was uh, a recording of um, Gordon explaining about him introducing quail. Apparently, there were a few quail here, but he introduced <laughs> quail. He actually bought really? them, brought them out here, oh. and let them go. <laughs> they had archery and... Huh. Uh, yeah. Well, well it, this is fun that we, uh, this is a great of, little book here. This yeah. would be nice to get some pictures out of this. Sure. Yeah, they, they, as I say, fishing was the big thing here. And, uh, and of course, there's swimming in the Gulf. Uh, it, it, 
the kids, of course, got more of a kick out of that. Uh, Those are the apartments. The apartments, right. And now, that's... This shows the, uh, the, the uh, um, Whitney Beach apartments and cottages. And uh, I, I, this must be the line of uh, Australian pines that went alongside yeah. the... Uh, uh, well, they said pines. originally that Ringling planted those, but I don't know if that's a true story or if that was just something that he may have planted some of them and then other people planted the others. I, I don't know. It, I, I kind of think, having been in government, uh, knowing that when they put in the road, yeah. I think the engineers may have specified that they needed to put in some vegetation there to hold the um, uh, foundation of the road. Mm. And uh, so uh, it may be because this portion of the road was built by uh, Manatee County. They mm -hmm. went down to the county line and it stopped. And then uh, they, I, I think Ringling paid for the Sarasota portion. Okay, now I'm just going to show this yeah. picture, and then we just have to wind up for now, and we'll just start again. Right. Uh, yes. Yeah. We, okay. So that would be the uh, Whitney Beach right there. Yeah. Uh, let, let me say something about this Whitney Beach. When Gordon Whitney bought the property, he told me he had about fifteen to 1,700 feet from... Uh, what was John Ringling uh, Parkway, mm -hmm. uh, but it's now uh, Gulf Mexico Drive, and uh, at the very northwestern tip. Right. And he said everything was going along fine until the Corps of Army Engineers came in and dredged a, and deepened the channel from Cortez down to the east side of Lombo Key, separating... Sister Keys from Longboat. Right. And when that happened, they, 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 uh, uh, a realtor from Braden, who had a client that owned Pickets and Jewfish Key. Right. He wanted to get... So Walter Harden? Walter Harden is correct, yep. He wanted to, to uh, make, connect those two uh, keys and... In so doing, he created a, a breakwater that disrupted the normal flushing action of the tides. Right. And, the, and they, they had to come around, and the force of the current was dis, disfused by the, the... Right. So, consequently, it changed the way the sand accreted. And we're still having trouble today. Yeah, absolutely. And he said... We, I, I had to move my uh, apartments or cottages back three times. Right. Okay, we've got to stop right now, yeah. if you don't mind, just for yeah. now. Okay, now. I came to uh, Longboat Key many, many years ago, 1951, and uh, to visit friends of mine who had a restaurant on Longboat Key called the Peppermint Stick. Oh, yeah. Uh, John and Mildred Ashcraft. And uh, one day, while visiting with them and driving back towards Sarasota, I passed the trailer park. And I thought, having never been in the trailer park before, I thought I'd go in and see what it was all about. I did so. I also had a dual purpose. I wanted to pick up some stamps. And the post office, I was told, was in the trailer park. Now, did we get your name? I'm sorry. Did we get... Oh, I... I no, we didn't. Okay. Uh, we didn't. Uh, you want me to give that now? Sure, okay. that would be good. These are my reflections. My name is Al Jansen, and uh, I've been on Longboat Key on and off for 60 years now. Uh, in the trailer park, and then I lived up at the north end here. I rented some property from Cecil Schofield uh, for a number of years. These, again, are my reflections of the early days, my early days here on Longboat Key. Um, I mentioned I went into the little post office. I think Mr. Williams was the postmaster at that time, but he wasn't there, and there were two women in there. One of the women was uh, Gladys Weber. 
She told me that that was the name, but she wanted to be called Dutch, Dutch Weber. Yeah. And that was Nelson Weber's wife, and he was one of the three owners of the park. The other one being Tommy Jurgens, and Tommy Jurgens' father-in-law, Lou Garman, were the three yeah. original owners owners of the park, and that they opened the park in 1948. They bought it in 47, but they didn't open until 48, and they put the three roads in, the North Road, the Main Street, and the, and the South Road, and they built, the first building they built was a building that's now being used as a real estate office out in front, but that was a, a, a general store. It was one of only two general stores on the key at that time, the other one being up here on Broadway. And uh, in back of the general store was their office, the park office. And I remember walking around, I asked if it was permissible for me to walk around the park, and I said, yes, it is, and they said, yes, it was, and uh, uh, I noticed couple of men digging a big hole and I curious I went over and I asked them what they were doing and they said they were they were putting septic tanks in <laughs> and that was a trip uh, a very tricky job on yeah. on Longboat Key back in those days because if you didn't anchor them properly at high tide they'd float and break the connections and right. then you had all kinds of problems. <laughs> While I was talking to them a jeep pulled up, a man got out and came over to me and shook hands and he told me his name was Tom Jurgens. He was one of the owners. And I that was really the beginning of a long, long friendship. Tommy and I knew each other for many, many, many years. And I asked him to tell me a little bit about the park and he said that uh, we were this park they were trying to get people who would come there to eventually retire there. That was their aim not stay just a month or two months or for the winter season. Yeah. They wanted people to retire there. And they had a lot to offer. They had, they had the beach and uh, swimming and sun tanning. They built a tea head dock out into the bay, a fishing pier. It was about 150, 180 feet long, something like that, that people could fish off of. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the thing that he was most proud of is they had private Bass. It was the only trailer park, I guess one of only two on the west coast of Florida, really? had private bass. Wow. That was the big selling point, and that's what they were pushing. And uh, most of the people that they had there then were from the Midwest, Ohio, Michigan, but mostly Indiana, as I remember. And uh, at the time, he had 125 rental lots. About half were taken and most of the people were permanent, which became very important a few years later because when the, they wanted to build the public beach on the key here, they wanted to build it right in front of the two trailer parks and uh, the only way that they could stop it was to incorporate and uh, I think at that time we had less than 150 permanent residents on Longbow Key. Yeah. <laughs> Just compare that with what the six or seven thousand we have today. <laughs> right. But anyway, at least half of the votes for incorporation came from the two trailer parks. And that put it over the top. Wow. We were allowed to incorporate, elect yeah. a mayor and, yeah. and a board and uh, that stopped, of course, the beach from going in. But more importantly, I think it was a couple of years later, when Mr. Davis came along, and uh, he liked what he saw on Longboat Key, and of course he invested through a Vita Corporation, millions and millions of dollars, I don't remember how many, but I think it was in excess of $50 million he invested on Longboat Key. And he mentioned in several talks that he would not have invested as heavily as he did if we were not incorporated. So that was very important that we became mm -hmm. And he was also very instrumental in getting the bridge built 
and the Northern End here. Because we got the lip John and Mildred used to tell me the state always says they're going to do it, they're going to build it, and nothing ever happened until Mr. Davis got yeah, involved. That's Arthur Bonnie Davis? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, then from our tour. Yeah. 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 And he was a, he was a partner with the uh, the man who would eventually be, uh, not eventually, was at the time, I guess, Secretary of Treasure, Treasury for out of Pittsburgh. He owned Pittsburgh Glass, Pittsburgh Paint Company. Uh, what the heck? Wasn't it Mellon? Was it? Mellon. Andrew Mellon. Yeah. Andrew Mellon, yeah. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he had lots and lots of money, and he fortunately invested it here, and uh, I think we owe an awful lot to him because yeah. this beautiful paradise that we've all yeah. grown to love here would look vastly different today yeah. if it wasn't for, for Mr. Yeah, Davis. Right. You might just look one island north. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, see. for a comparison, yeah. yes. Yeah, and exactly. If he went up to uh, Tallahassee and he talked to them up there and all of a sudden the building of that bridge became the number one public works project in the state of Florida. That, that bridge uh, was the last one built by Manatee in the state. Yeah. They, 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 they passed a bond issue of $19 million to build the new Anna Maria, the new Cortez, the Longboat, and also the one over the Braden River. Oh. And uh, so that was all tied in there. As you say, Davis was very influential, and uh, I'm sure he had a lot to do. <coughs> yeah. yeah. In the Tommy told me that uh, see, our lots in our park were very small. And, uh, trailers were getting bigger and bigger, and uh, he was losing business because people had bigger trailers and our lots couldn't accommodate them. Right. Well, uh, at the time, they were, they were doing some dredging on the intercoastal, and also they were dredging out some man-made canals just north of Bayport, which Bayport is just yeah. north of us. So uh, Doug Ray, who, who owned the uh, Twin Shores next door, was on the board, I guess, at the time. And uh, I guess he was Public Works Commissioner, but I'm not sure of that. Anyway, uh, to get the permits for dumping, uh, they had to go through him. So he said, hey, look no further. You guys are looking to for a place to dump the spoils, dump it on the end of my property. <laughs> and they did. And they filled the back end of his property in right. and they made a little, he had to make a horseshoe shaped marina. Well then, uh, that was, he was after Tommy and Webb to fill the end of our property and our, or their sure. property at the time. A little self-serving because if they filled in, the two would have butt, and he wouldn't have to build a seawall on the south side. <laughs> so finally, Webb uh, said, hey, this is a good deal. We, we need more room anyway, and then we can make bigger lots, and we can take bigger trailers. So he had them fill what we call the Gold, Gold Coast in, which is north of the marina. And then about a year and a half later, they decided to fill the south side in. And by that time, the dredging company had moved on, and their job was over. So they had to hire a dredging company to come in, dredge our, our marina out, put the spoils on the south side, and then they had to bring additional fill in to, uh, to complete the job. Now we were faced our, with a long seawall on the south side. And they were very friendly with the property owner just south of us because for years, we had been leasing a strip of land from him for parking and for boat trailers and for, they had barbecue pits over there and everything else. And originally he said, okay, he said, uh, I'll fill my property in too. And then he changed his mind. And this annoyed Webb a little bit. And uh, he never did fill it in. We had to build this 500 foot seawall. Wow. The owners did. And then a couple of years later, he sold the property to the people who built Buttonwoods Coal. And when the property was sold, of course, we couldn't park there anymore. We couldn't no. use it as parking. And it's a problem that we're living with in our park to this day. Yeah. We don't have enough parking. But we, 
by filling in the two pieces of property, we picked up, I think, 46 or 48 more, more lots. Wow. And they were bigger lots than we had, and we got bigger trailers. We were able to come in. We also got a very nice marina out of it. Sure. Uh, but it was costly, costly proposition. And, uh, uh, but it worked out well. The, the, the thing that they should have done, in hindsight, is they should have purchased that strip of land that was offered to us, and uh, we didn't buy it. But uh, you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Were, were you retired all this time? No, 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 no. I worked for Texaco for years and years. And uh, I would come down here whenever I could on vacation time. My parents bought into the park in 58, and I uh, didn't buy in until 62, actually. Uh, and uh, bought a unit across the, across the way from them. At the time, uh, I wasn't married, and one of the park rules was that you had to had to be married. The operative word was big. They would rent the couples. The operative word was married. They had to be married. Uh, you could you could have uh, you could have pets, but they had to be in a certain part of the park, over on the south side on Fifth Street, and uh, you couldn't have children under the age of fourteen. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, great, great <laughs> idea, yeah. Do uh, you think we can show some of the pictures? Can sure. we get into that? And then, I mean, we can continue talking, but <laughs> yeah. what I'd like to do is I'm just going to pause for a minute. Okay. So we're on that general picture. Now, yeah. that what is that general picture there? It, it's a, a picture of events at the park, but it is, in principle, it's, it's a picture of one of the owners, Tom Jurgens. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in on him. You want to say anything about him, or he was well, just a he, friend of he yours? Was, he was the man that really uh, guided our, our, our park, one of the founding fathers. And uh, what we have there today, uh, he was most responsible for. And we bought the park from him in 1992. It's the man with the white hat on. Yes. Okay. Yep. So I'm going to back out, and I'm going to pause for a second, and we'll get another picture, okay? All righty. Okay. This just, is just a... All right. So go at about St. Patrick's it's Day? A, one of our one of our St. Patty's Day parades, and this is some of the people from the block. Well, well that's coming up. Well, it's coming up again on 17th. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's kind of fun. Here's a picture back in, I got dated some of these, 1960 of the shuffleboard court. In okay. The park. You still have the shuffleboard? No, here? we put a swing pool in. We saw the nice. shuffleboard out. We put a swing. He's a well, St. Patty's Day. Well, that was pretty popular. You know, shuffleboard. Yeah. I remember you used to go to a hotel and you go out and play shuffleboard. Yeah. Okay. Here's a flyer for our trailer park. Okay. Let me put it here. Uh, I I got a date on it somewhere. Uh, 1953. 53. Yep. And that's from. President. That's like from the Longboat yeah, Observer. I, I, Longboat yeah. Observer. Here's a postcard, 1955, of our park. Uh, and, and you can see that the Twin Shores hadn't started yet. They, they opened about three years later. Okay, let me just move this one so, okay. so they can see that one better. This so is, that's the park. And you say this one was taken in Longboat Key Gulf Shore Trailer Park. Flip it over. Uh, 1955. 55. So this was, uh, you were there actually then? Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. Your mother, your, yeah, your mother. Your parents were, yeah. Uh, this is 1952, a picture of uh, Nelson Weber and Dutch Weber. He was also one of the owners. Can mm -hmm. you imagine today if they were alive and all the same sex marriage? Oh, <laughs> they go for bananas and somebody drive in. <laughs> Uh, well, one. I remember one time they had a, uh, I don't know if it was one time or if they did it many times, they had the Airstream Rendezvous. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that oh, on yeah. Coquina Beach? Oh, yeah. Was that I one time or many times? Well, no, they moved it over to... Uh, yeah, over by Payne Park. Proof, proof Can I put this here? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moved it over to Proof. There's a picture of the uh, of the park after the... It was filled in after the and that, does it look like that today? Uh, pretty much, yeah. 
pretty much, yeah. Uh, the Australian pines are not there anymore, and uh, well, you don't have to worry about your septic tanks anymore. No, we don't. We hooked up. <laughs> we hooked, hooked up, up to yeah. Manatee County. This is a picture of the Pelican Perch group of uh, park members uh, next to our rec hall. That's got a date on the back of it too. This is. It doesn't have a date. I don't know. Well, that's okay. It's. Yeah. A Probably looks like about the 50s sometimes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Here's a picture of the post office um, at the park and the guy pushing a lawnmower is Nelson Weber, mm -hmm. one of the owners. And that was our little post office and I guess uh, it was only there for a couple of years, and where it went after that, I think it came back up north here again. So I moved it around, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to just grab this okay, one. Okay, that's a picture of the end of our dock, right? Uh, our fishing pier that went out into the bay, and that's uh, oh, got to be in the 50s anyway, sometime in the 50s. Um, this is St. Patrick's Day again, I think we covered that. Okay, I'm going to just put that right Here's there. Here's the beach before the groins went in, All before right. the wooden groins went in. Well, those groins were very protective of the rope. You know, it, when they took them out, the storms come from the southwest. Yeah, and yeah. It undercut yeah. the highway. What did they call those? Dog bones? Yeah, or yeah, they were dog, dog bones. bones. There yeah. was some guy in Venice or something. And then they, they hire experts to come tell us where the hot spots were. Well, you know, well they were where the groins used to yeah, be. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, well, exactly. the original groins were wood. And then after a while, they were replaced by concrete groins. Yeah. And then eventually, when the renourishment program started, they took the concrete growing Some out. girl up at the University of South Florida, or no, the University of Florida, uh, her name was Erickson or something, and she, you know, it's like she was a Latter-day uh, prophet, and she said, oh, you got to take those things out. And I'll tell you what, they, they made um, a clobber down there at the colony, they made him take, and he sued him. And, and got a court order to stop because that growing down there saved his swimming pool. Oh, I was here yeah. when the, when the, when, the, when the, 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 Okay, I'm going to move one more picture here. I'm just, this is just a picture of the trailer park. Yes. Okay, so now, I mean, if you don't mind, I'm just, because no. I can see okay. exactly where they need to go. And All like right. I said, this camera's not great. Well, that's too bad about that arm. They, they got it. Well, I, I, you know, you just, you know, have you ever heard run what you brung? Yeah. You know, this is running what we brung. Tommy and his wife. Uh-huh. Uh, we Jones. had a hat. That was yeah. a good idea. Here's the, here's the uh, hurricane of 63. Yeah. It's good thing. Oh, do you, I guess you had the septic tanks. <laughs> no. Well, no, because we didn't hook up to, uh, until 80. 83, 83. Yeah, so you had the I septic tanks going Michigan. there. Well, yep. Yeah, yeah 83. Yeah, it's, well, it was mandatory. We had a hookup. Yeah, Everybody well, had a hookup. Okay, yeah. well, so it, we got the it, next it picture. Would be Here's the beach without the groins. Right. And, uh, and this is the beach right in front of the trailer right, park right. or the, the mobile home park. Right. And this is picture. This is 1955 of the front of the park. Uh huh. And here we have uh, the po 1955 again, the post office, and this is uh, Dutch Weber standing out in front of the post office. Okay. Uh, just a group of people, 1962, walking on Main Street. Okay, great. That's the Main Street in Main the park. St Main Street in the park, I yes. I bet some of the old timers in there could recognize some of them. I, I guess they could, yeah. Here's the, uh, again, this is the hurricane, the water piling mm -hmm. in, the, in the park. Well, it's kind of, you know, it's hard to explain to people kind of the sinking feeling you get. Mm -hmm. It's like the water just keeps coming yeah. up and you just say, yeah. I hope it stops. This is yeah. a copy of the old park rules. Mm -hmm. This goes back to the 50s. 
So no loud music, and no children. No children. Uh, and pets uh, had to be in the pet section. It gives the office hours. There's two of them. Or the lab okay. dogs. Is, mm -hmm. is, 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 yeah. You restrict the size. No, they weren't. Re but one thing you had to have your pet on a leash if it was outside yeah. of your unit, and you had to clean up after your pet. Yeah. And he found out after a while that the worst pet was not a dog; it was a parrot. We had a woman that had a parrot, Good. and that yeah. parrot squawked 24-7. Oh. Oh, yeah. Now, is this one you want to see? You can put okay. that down. We'll put that I don't down know what. I got a date on it, I think, somewhere. And that's the end of my pictures. Okay, and yeah. I just, you know, uh, uh, maybe Ken has a question. I we, uh, right after we got the fire engine, uh, and I don't know if he's still alive or not, is that Willie Haig is still alive? I... Uh, the, maybe his children I are. So. I don't oh, know. Okay. Well, I don't think you, you remember either. Willie, don't you? Uh, a, well, a little yeah. bit. Maybe we used he to work play. for the, the the city. Yeah, we did. Yeah. He did. Willie, Willie, uh, and I used to play golf together, and we used to go fishing together. And I can tell you another story about going fishing that involved uh, uh, <laughs> Joe Harris. But anyway, we got that fire engine, which was a piece of junk. And yeah, we never should have bought it. <laughs> well, that was. And we used to pull it out, wash it, and wax it. Yeah. See? We never, hardly ever went through a fire. Yeah. And uh, we found, though, that one day there was a, 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 a brush fire. The brush was burning. And the rattlesnakes ran across the road to get away from the fire. Right. And we ran over them with the fire engine to kill them. We killed two or three of them. <laughs> but there were rattlesnakes all over. Longwell Key. And they were big. They were big. And there yeah. was the raccoons were all over Longwell <laughs> Key, too. Even, well, that guy feeding them down here at the Marv, uh, not Marv, it's the, uh, yeah. uh, you free me a hay. That didn't help matters any, but we had a lot of raccoons out here. What did uh, that used to be called before you feed me a hay? Was it Jory's? Jor or? Jory's. 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 Jory's, yeah. That was part of the floor show. You would come and have dinner and then go out <laughs> and watch the coons. Well, I'll tell you a story about the, about the fishing. Joe Harris, of course, had the, had the Sleepy Lagoon. And he had a boat called the Sleepy Lagoon. And, and, and uh, Willie and I used to go there drinking. And... Uh, he always was going to take us out for a fishing trip. He said, well, we'll go out with the boat. And finally, three of us, four of us were supposed to go out. He, Willie, myself, and, and, and uh, Jack uh, Ashcraft, John's son, mm -hmm. who's still alive. He, Jack's still a well, He doesn't live on a on longboat anymore. He lives in, the, in South Central. But anyway, the day came for the fishing trip, and Joe couldn't go. Harris, we used to call him that, because he was much older than they were. So he said, oh, he says, here, here's the keys. Take my boat, and you guys go. So the three of us got on, and we pulled out. He had the boat where the, near where the sleepy would go. Unless it was Fort Cannons is now right. in that mm -hmm. cold there. Well, we pulled out into a, uh, when, maybe, maybe a half a mile out, if that, out of the, uh, in the Gulf? Uh, no, we never, we never got to the Gulf. Uh, we just we just pulled out into the inland waterway. We turned north. We intended to go to the Gulf. We never got that far. And all of a sudden, the engine stopped in the boat. Jeez. It's a good oh, thing I, you didn't get out of the Gulf. Yeah. <laughs> I said, boy, what the heck? We couldn't start it. We tried to start it. So one of the guys, I don't know if it was or Jack or somebody, he said, hey, maybe we're out of gas. Yeah. So we stuck the gas tank. I stick, stuck the gas tank. It was about that much gas in the bottom oh of the Oh, my tank. God. Don't forget <laughs> to put gas in the thing. And there we are. Now, we're paddling. We had one paddle on the boat. This was about a 32-foot yeah. boat. We had one paddle. And all we're trying to do is to keep it off the sandbars because the tide was going out. We didn't want to try to keep it in the channel. And finally, a fisherman came along. I guess one of these mullet fishermen. And he towed us back. He wouldn't take us all the way in, but he towed us back to the entrance, and we had to paddle in. When we got back yeah. to the dock, there were three five-gallon cans of gas sitting up on the dock, 
that he had intended to put in the gas tank, yeah, but that. forgot about it, because he never came down on the boat the morning we left. He just gave me the keys, and he said, take it. Yeah. So that was our big experience. <laughs> well, I tell people that uh, the reason everybody used to be nice to each other in boats, you know, people always yeah. smile and wave, is because you never knew when you were going to need help. Oh, yeah. God. That yeah. might be the person who tows yeah. you in. Yeah. And yeah. so everybody, you know, the motors didn't work as well as the ones we yeah. have today, and they oftentimes didn't yeah. work. Yeah. We st uh, and another thing, too, of course, these channels were not marked as well as yeah. they are today. In fact, some of them weren't marked at all. That's right. And if you got out of that channel, you were in trouble because you didn't know which way to go. That's you know, right. well, where do yeah. I go to get deeper water? And it was a, it was a real a tricky situation. You know, he went by the General Harris. You know. Yeah. You know, you know how he got to be a general? No. He he paid the Canadian government so much yeah. money to get the, and they gave him an honorary title of general. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he had that sleepy lagoon, he and his wife, and that was about only one or two places you could drink. The other one was Mar Vista, and we kind of liked it there, Billy and I. We used to go over there and, uh, and uh, get a few drinks. But he, as I remember, he was related to the Baldwin locomotive people who made oh, the Baldwin, right? Baldwin yeah. steam engine. Yeah. Philly, Lee Hagel was related to them. I think his mother was a Baldwin. I see. And he didn't do a damn thing. They finally, he got married, <laughs> and he moved in uh, where um, the uh, uh, real estate offices are. Uh, uh, Wiederbrock's? No. Wiederbrock. Wiederbrock. Yeah. On the second floor yeah. were apartments. And he moved up there with his new I think her name was Carol. Well, now, is this hers? Who? <laughs> Hager. Oh, Hager. Willie yeah, Hager's Willie, wife. Yeah, okay, Willie's yeah, wife, I yeah. think her name was yeah. Carol. Yeah. And, but, but Willie was related to Baldwin then? Baldwin. He was, oh, okay. he, his mother, I think, was a Baldwin. I see. All right, now, I'm going to have to wind up, but we can, can you know, oh. do this again another time. It was yeah. fun, and I, I think okay. you'll Whatever. appreciate yeah. it, and I'll make yeah. it available. Thanks for your time. Oh, well, i, I, I got to tell you a little quick story about that. Uh,